So nobody's driving this. Titan's not gonna believe this. He's gonna keep going, is someone driving? That's that it. crazy. We're doing something that nobody's ever done before. It's really three different things. The first one is make software that drives vehicles autonomously in complex urban environments. Second thing we're trying to do is we're building a vehicle. The third thing is we're building a ride hailing service so people can use this you know, as a substitute for a taxi. Just like you bring up your app for Uber, you bring it up for Zooks, a vehicle shows up, the doors open, and you step in, and it takes you to the next place and you get out. There's a huge array of sensors, so you can see things like GPS and LiDAR and radar and cameras, and they process all the data in real time. You guys are actually doing your own manufacturing in this facility? Yeah, so what we're doing here, so we, we have all the software development here. We have vehicle engineering teams. Okay. We're doing all the prototyping for all the various ones, the test vehicles and the new vehicles, all the design. You can look at your screen. So that's our vehicle. And then you can see, you can see the pedestrians. It's like the, everything. If you look out your window, you just saw those two pedestrians. Yeah. And they're now standing on the corner and that young woman's walking that way. Here's a That's car awesome. coming across the intersection. That's amazing. There's the car that turned left and there's the car that's gonna turn right. And now it's clear. I don't even know what to say. I'm like in <laughs> awe, this thing is crazy. And, and by the way, that was, that was a lane change on its own. And now we're gonna turn left. We have two five axis machines over there and a three axis, also a wire EDM. We also have a seven axis robot arm there that's really designed to cut low density materials like foam and wood. You're, you're a full CNC machinist, CNC programmer, and then you have to add like a lot of different expertise, right? So now it's like you're bringing in different types of bits for actually cutting foam. Yeah. You're holding, like work holding is like, it's how, a do lot you, different. how do you hold something that's so soft, right? Robot's a different animal than say even a five axis machine. It changes your approach. It changes the way you kind of attack materials as well. We use our 3D printing lab to 3D print fixtures in space. And then from there, we send it off to the CNC machine. That way, if we do need to change an angle, we're not wasting cutting and fixturing time. Things change all the time. Sensors change, locations change, components inside the vehicle change, but we can stay right on top of those changes. And we're not bogged down by you know, change orders with a supplier. We can really make those changes live in-house. Come on, it's like a CNC it's machine. It is. It's just like a Automatic. big machine. But it's making decisions as it's going exactly. based on its environment, right? So, right? So, yeah, that's the real difference. That's the real difference. You know, a CNC machine, you program, and it'll do smarter, dumb things. Yeah. You program it to hit the vice, it'll hit the vice. <laughs> so this is a prototype, and what we're going to drive later is a retrofit but you're building a vehicle that nobody's ever seen before. Yeah, but you can see like the elements of what will become the full-fledged production vehicle. First of all, there's sets of seats that face each other inside of it. It's symmetrical. There's two sets of articulating wheels. This one actually has a steering wheel, but the final ones will have absolutely none at all. There's no drivers. No drivers. So you guys are actually like, you're not touching anything. No. You're here just in case something goes wrong, just because that's California law, yeah, right? Chris Wait. keeps his hands near the steering wheel in case we need to disengage for just precautionary reasons. We are extra safe and we don't want 
uh, to play anything out, so we take over preemptively. Um, but then what we can do is we can take those discs and ingest them and kind of replay those in simulation to see what the robot would have done. This is the first op on a sensor mount for one of our uh, field test vehicles. Um, and then also the, the fixturing here and, and all of this stuff to do the second operation. And this is the part here installed in the vehicle. The function of all of this is essentially to get these sensors in exactly the right position so that we can do our autonomous driving in the field as safely as possible. And you know, every time we put it out there and the sensors are not quite in the right place, back to the drawing back board, the we drawing design board. another one. That's right. And then we need another 40 of those. This is my biggest tool, this is my favorite tool. Oh. This is a Styrotech uh, milling tool. Uh, it's hollow actually, so we've got a, a disc that sits on top of this and can actually suck the material out. So what's really nice about that is it, it removes um, dust and particulate from the room. It also looks really cool. This is one of my favorite tools actually, I just got it. Um, this is a Kenna metal. So this is an interchangeable tool tip, right? Low lock. Exactly. Oh. So, you know, a lot of times I need the reach on the on the yeah. machine to overcome uh, the axes and, the, and a little bit of the limitations there, right? And then you, and you basically just switch out that switch, switch out that out. tip if I need a if I need a end mill if I need a, a ball nose whatever. Um, it's right. great. A um, lot of guys are spending all this money for all this carbide when you could like buy that much carbide and save exactly. a huge amount of money and they don't even know. Exactly. Duo lock by Canna Metal. That's a good commercial. So here's a complicated situation. This would be a teleop situation. Yeah. So what we're going to do here. So it put like a block. Yeah. So, the... so, so it, it would not go. And one of the, one of the things that we are able to do here is the car is always connected back to the base. Mm -hmm. And if the car can't go forward, the teleoperator can give it permission to go forward. And so it's an extra level of precaution. And in the future, all of that will happen in less than a second. The passenger will never know that right. uh, a teleop tactician engaged with the vehicle. So there's someone back at the shop who actually took a look at what the situation was and said, okay. And then the robot said, okay. There's a lot of opportunity being created for doing manufacturing. I don't think we're going to create the jobs of old. I think yeah. we're going to have new kinds of manufacturing right. jobs where we can do things differently. Now with automation just like soaring and like companies like this, they can be in existence now, right? Exactly. You're making autonomous cars. To get the people that you need these days, it's really difficult, yeah, it's you know what I mean? Um, and so I really appreciate what you're doing because I think that that's an untapped talent pool, right? Um, a lot of people that really want to give back and contribute, right? And now you're giving them an opportunity. We need to put the same amount of value, or in some cases more value, on cutting edge technologies, teaching the kids to continue to work with their hands and with their minds together to build things as they grow up. And it's very important to know how to use a screwdriver or a mouse. I mean, one of the reasons why we decided to, to do it in San Francisco is it's, it's one of the most complicated places you could ever drive. You know, you have pedestrians, you have bicyclists, you have motorcycles, you have tourists who don't know what they're doing. Right now, we're gonna come up to one of the most difficult things. So this is a six-way intersection, and we're gonna try to make a left-hand turn. What we learn becoming successful in the city will immediately translate into, let's say for example, we want to do a ride service in Palo Alto. It's just straightforward for us. So you understand the complexity. Yeah, exactly. You have to, yeah, you have to wait for the oncoming traffic. You have to observe the pedestrians over there. So there we go. We just made an unprotected left turn. 
in a six-way intersection. But you have to be able to completely drive because none of us are going to get in this unless it's as good as a human driver. In fact, I, I believe that this has to be better than a human driver before we're going to get in it. Because of automation, you're creating 700 jobs and you have a machine shop and you're making parts yeah. right here so you can make things that you weren't even thinking about 20 years yeah. ago. Automation is just more powerful tools to make stuff. It allows us to make really high quality products at affordable prices. And so that's what's really different about this. You know, in the old days, it would have been hugely capital intensive to start a car company. Nobody in their right mind would start a car company. And we've started a car company in California. American manufacturing. American manufacturing, right here. The app should be letting you know not to forget a few things. Almost there. We're almost here. <laughs> okay, you've been in the future. It's incredible. It's, okay, it's, it's a view, it's, it's a view into the future of cities. That was awesome. Oh, that was great. Trip to the future. I'm back. Yeah.